Information is discovered, created, and shared in many formats and for various purposes. There are many factors that affect how the information is controlled and the costs involved, which I will briefly present to you. There are other videos that are available to address most of these issues in more detail, so this is a simple and brief overview. First, we need to determine what is information. In Webster's Dictionary Online, there are two main definitions with explanatory notes for each. For this class that focuses on research, we will use this definition that information is knowledge obtained from investigation, study, or instruction. While we can gain information through research, sharing that information has developed naturally. Use of language is the key to sharing information, and sharing is facilitated through communication. Either the ideas are expressed through spoken language or written in some way. The ideas can be shared with the public or through private and informal channels. Most private and informal sharing of information occurs in conversations and correspondence. Information shared with the public is usually presented in print publications, performances, conferences, and other media. Recently, social media has blurred some of this as informal and private conversations are recorded and shared often without the originator's permission or control. This class will focus on the use of publicly shared information. Public information is usually available through publications and there are many types and venues. When you consider how information is shared, Technology has changed how we record information. In the earliest ages of mankind, knives, rocks, and anything else sharp were used to make marks in the sand. But they didn't last long. Soon ideas were sketched onto rocks, wood, and other surfaces more permanently. Later, ink and lead were used on paper and eventually chalk and crayons. When the printing press was developed, it was a drastic improvement compared to handwriting, but still the ideas were printed on paper. Personal typewriters were the next development. Sharing large amounts of information was available to the everyday person, but still recorded on paper. Computers and word processors became the next common format, but in addition to printing ideas on paper, the information was also electronically recorded on tapes, cards, floppy disks, CDs, and portable jump drives. When the Internet was developed, websites became a common way to share information, and many people post ideas to the digital cloud, where it is accessible from any computer with Internet access. However, before recording information, it is important to think about who will retrieve and use the information. A knowledge base is the level of understanding necessary to understand information. For the general public, it is commonly accepted that adults know how to read, eat healthy, monitor their finances, and other general skills. However, there are many specialists that have more advanced knowledge and therefore have a more focused knowledge base, especially in that area of study. So if we consider most high school graduates to have a certain level of general information, we would also expect most scientists to know more specialized information in their field. This is also true of historians and artists and other specialists. While each of these specialists began with the foundation and the general knowledge common to the general public, their knowledge base has become more focused as they probe more specialized areas in their profession. This leads to a need for more specialized information and a more specialized venue to share that information. Many professions place emphasis on research as a tool to maintain a level of knowledge and awareness of new issues, tools, and practices. These must be presented in a manner that presents the evidence and in peer-reviewed publications and professional conferences. The vetting process of other professionals verifying 
the research adds credibility and value to the material presented. Like many positions dependent on being current in their field of study, faculty have a high demand for journals to publish research articles, and new journals are in publication every month. However, the high-impact journals are much more selective in their choice of articles to publish, and they demand much higher subscription rates. In addition, since the general and popular literature does not factor into a faculty member's tenure application, the general public is often misinformed and unaware of many issues, especially topics relevant to complex, controversial issues sensationalized by the media. Let's compare scholarly and popular literature. Most general or popular literature is intended for the general public with a general knowledge base. Academic or scholarly publications intend to share information and creative works for professionals and advanced practitioners of the discipline. Academic authors share their information to others in their field that have a comparably focused knowledge base, developing collegial support in the advancement of the profession. General and popular materials are shared with the general public to enhance their general understanding and awareness of local, regional, national, and global issues, as well as general entertainment. Authors are interested members of the public, and writers are paid by the publisher. In addition, the peer review process for the scholarly publications adds quite a bit of credibility with professionals reviewing the content and research methodology of each article to verify the information is accurate and conclusive. In the general publications, the publisher's staff reviews the material, but they have a more general knowledge base. While academic and popular publications are available in most disciplines and interest groups, there are three main formats for publishing. Most people are aware of traditional publishing companies, such as McGraw-Hill, Houghton Mifflin, Prentice Hall, and others. These companies publish journal and magazine articles, books, and other media submitted by authors that are under contract. The material submitted by the authors is reviewed by editors, and the editor often returns the material to the author with comments for revision or simply rejects it for their publication. After the original author has made the revisions, it is prepared for printing. Meanwhile, the publisher negotiates a contract with the author, makes decisions about marketing and promotion of the material and other business arrangements. In response to overwhelming leaps in journal subscription rates, many scholars began a movement called Open Access to make articles available to anyone with Internet access. Several journals are published in this manner, although they continue to have publishers and editors. There are several different levels of open access publishing, but generally there is a fee the author pays the publisher for the services rendered, rather than the readers paying for a subscription. Sometimes an author's employer will pay the fee or it is paid with grant funding for the research. An author that decides to self-publish has the same amount of work to prepare the material for publication, including editing, marketing, printing, and addressing copyright issues. However, without the support of a publisher, the author relies on chance and serendipity to successfully locate an audience. Meanwhile, since there is no publisher, the author retains copyright and reaps all profits and losses. You will be using many sources this semester, and you need to recognize that some are free, others are free to you as students, but the university has paid for them, and there may be restrictions for use. We will learn more about this in our discussion about copyright. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm available.